Greetings YouTube and welcome to my latest weapons build. Today I'm going to work on a battle axe and the main component of this battle axe is going to be the blade and this blade here I believe is a motorcycle brake disc section. Obviously there would have been more than one. I think this is what this is. It's got the kind of striations on it it, it, it it would have to be one of those and it was mounted to this which is I think you know the, the actual part that attaches to the motorcycle itself, but I'm not 100% sure. This is threaded. It's not just a through hole. So it's very secure. So these, these thread through there, they pass through um, these slots, and then there are bolts on the, I mean, the nuts on the other side, which I've reassembled so I keep the, the nuts and bolts and with this plate. Because so I plan on using this again for something. I just don't know what, and I want to, don't want to lose those three components that go with it. Uh, it's not overly thick. And that's going to work in my advantage because when it comes to putting a bevel on this, it'll be a hell of a lot easier because it's not all that thick. Um, and since I'm not cutting wood, this is going for combat, uh, that's okay with me. Now, traditionally, a bat, an axe would have this kind of a, of a, of a, of a handle. This is, this is an actual axe handle. Um, but the thing is, is that an axe handle, the axe head slips over it slips over this and then you put a wedge in here uh, a couple of wedges a wooden one and then some uh, and then uh, and a couple of metal ones and that spreads it open and keeps the head in place keeps the axe head in place but i can't do this because if i were to open this slot up wide enough to accommodate that head there's just not much meat here there's not much wood on the other side of that and i really would con be concerned about the integrity of this because this was not meant to handle those kinds of stresses different kinds of stresses a lot of stress but not the kind that you would be exerting on this with an internally mounted blade so i'm going to use this which is a pick axe hang handle so you still have an oblong uh shaft so you can still achieve where, uh, angle alignment edge alignment so you're going to be actually be able to make sure that the the ed, you know, the blade is facing in the direction you want it to without having to look at it. Um, so long as you start your swing with the edge facing in the right direction, um, just like you would with any other tool mounted in this, like a pick. You want to pick. You want to make sure your pick head is aimed area where you want it. So you need an oblong uh, type of handle. I've learned that thanks to my friend Skull. Uh, edge alignment is a real thing. I wish I'd known. I uh, met him far earlier because too many of my sketches on my DeviantArt page show round shafts, and in reality, they shouldn't. Round shafts should be only used for omnidirectional things like maces and, you know, um, uh, fl uh, morning stars and things like that. Even hammers should realistically have the ability to aim the head where you want it and should properly have... Uh, oblong shafts. Lots of them didn't, though. Um, you see, a lot of a lot of uh, hammers out there had round shafts. Interestingly, I've seen a number of Indian hammer designs that actually had D guards. So you'd have or picks with D guards, so that you could definitely align the weapon the way you wanted to, because you could, you know, you know where your hand is, because your hand is covered by a D guard. I always thought that was kind of cool. So. We have this blade, we have this handle, and we have these two fasteners. Uh, this one is almost the right size, and this one is way too long. But I needed ones that were as close to that hole size as possible, because I don't want a lot of slop. I want as little slop as possible. Um, and I was decided after I found this one, I'm like, well, well that's cool, it's a carriage bolt. Well, I tried to find two pair carriage bolts. So I poked around in my collection of bits and bobs and found a second one. And I found two nuts and two washers. So even though the nuts are slightly different, I don't care. Um, this is a post-apocalyptic build after all. And obviously I will be cutting off the excess bolt length because even this one's going to be a little bit too long. Um, the boat though, but not by much. And I will save this section. I may find a use for a piece of threaded rod because threaded rod can sometimes be useful to make bolts that you don't already have. Um, though I don't know what size uh, nut these are. It was not easy to find them. I had to dig pretty deep to find two nuts that matched these bolts. Um, 
apparently this is not a size that I normally keep in my collection. I've got a lot of containers of nuts and not all of them necessarily have the size I wanted. But you know, that's that's it. That's a life when you're when you're scrounging for parts in your in you know, amongst your fasteners. Um, and I'm going to mount this here. Now, I can't decide if I want to do even or I want to come in a little because in a little makes my life a smidge easier because it means that there's more meat between the end of the shaft and uh, the first hole. I do it this way. There's not a lot of wood, and that kind of makes me nervous. So I may want to come in an inch um, and measure that to be an inch, make a mark, and then center this thing uh, where I want it, and then bolt the whole thing down. So once I've got it bolted down, I can then mark the two holes exactly where I want them and drill them because I want them to be uh, centered on the shaft. Uh, that means that that section is going to stick out the back and I'm okay with that. I will then make two even cuts. Uh, no, I can't do that, can I? Hmm. Well, I'm sorry I'm figuring things out as I'm going. If I do this, it doesn't matter. If I do this, if I do that, I've got to come up with that cut first, that angled cut, if I want it to match the angle of the... Yeah, that does make it slightly more difficult to make that slot. <clears throat> Not impossible, but slightly more difficult. What I may end up doing is... I don't know if I have a coping saw, then I can actually cut that angle with. I don't do a lot of woodworking, really, to be honest. I don't. Um, hmm. So if I may end up with a straight cut on this end. It's not going to be horribly unattractive. But that end, I would do a straight cut, and then I would do the angled cut. Because I want that angled cut to match what's here, so that it doesn't have to be pretty because the inside you're not going to see, but I would like it to match simply because you get more support that way, and I want more support. And I don't want a slot that goes straight all the way down to that meeting point, so I don't want that. So I may just live with the fact that, that cause making that cut first would be very difficult for me because I really don't have the kind of woodworking tools I think that I would need to do that. And I don't have a chisel that narrow. I picked up a quarter inch chisel because I thought this thing was a quarter inch thick and that's like a quarter inch thick. So that could be set into a shaft and not be a problem. But this is uh, like less than 200 thousandths of an inch thick. So that's not going to work from the quarter inch sort of chisel I, I, I've purchased. It's not going to cut it. So, hmm, yeah, I guess we're just going to have to live with the fact that that slot is going to be straight across and if it really bothers me I just suck it up I guess <laughs> I'm just I'm not gonna make my life even more complex than it needs to be so the first thing I'm gonna need to do is clamp this thing down so I have it aligned the way I want to and then I can make my marks with some punch center punches so I get the holes exactly where I want and drill the holes first because that just makes sense to drill the holes first because the drilling a solid piece of wood is a heck of a lot easier than drilling a piece of wood that already has a slot in it because you end up with flex and things that you don't get with a piece of solid wood. Alrighty, so that's going to be the first step, um, and then we'll see how the cutting goes. So, and I probably end up drilling, doing this all by hand, and I am not a skilled woodworker. So we're going to see how difficult this is. Maybe it'll work perfectly, and maybe it won't. Well, the holes weren't perfect. The second one came out better than the first one. I, I, again, it's a learning process. How do you drill a straight hole at perpendicular to, this, to the center of an oblong object? Well, you mess the first one up, so you learn how to do the second one straighter. So what I did is I opened these up to the next size up. So there is a little bit of slop in these holes, but the bolts are still perfectly sized to the blade. So between centering them and clamping them, we should be good. Now, I've laid out 
the lines for the blade. This is what I'm going to be working with and I'm going to cut on the positive side of this with the with my handsaw and I'm just going to have to come in here and very very carefully drill stick uh, saw straight down and I'm hoping I can do this. I got no idea if I have the accuracy or the skill to pull this off. We're going to give it a try. I mean ideally if I had a table saw I would just put this vertically in the table saw and then just run it vertically through the table and boom, and you'd be done. Literally, it would take one pass and you'd be finished. But I don't have that capacity, nor do I have the, not only do I not own a table saw, but I don't have the right kind of fixturing to hold something like this vertically and not moving. So you don't want it to be torquing on you while you're cutting through it. And I don't even know how you make something like that. Maybe a V-block, a sh very shallow V-block, maybe? Yeah, maybe a very shallow V-block? I'm not positive. I don't have the very shallow V-block. I don't have a table saw, so that's not an option. But it is an option, is me to try to cut this with a handsaw. I'm not looking forward to it, but I'm going to give it a try. I'm using a Japanese pull saw. It's a thin blade, so I'm hoping if I cut on the positive side of this, these two lines, maybe I can get this to work. We're going to find that out. Yay! Well, that's the first cut done, and it was like almost half an hour of my life because this is very hard wood, and my saw is not new. So, yeah, I didn't get it perfect. I started out positive. I, yeah, it wasn't quite... I mean, I'm still on the left side of the line, but I split the line at the, at the bottom. So I may end up having to shave some off at the bottom here. Um... And I can do that later. We're going to see how it looks once I get the second cut. And then the second cut's going to be a little more difficult because I really have to line that one up to kind of be as as far across the from the from on the right of that line as I can get it without making it too wide because that piece of wood at the bottom is not thick. And I really don't want to come in at an angle and have it break off on me because I don't know how the heck I'm going to get that out of there. I honestly don't. Again, I am not a woodworker. I have never claimed to be a woodworker. I am a junksmith. Junksmiths do not know fine woodworking. But I'm giving it my best here. Um, it was kind of satisfying when I get to the holes and I could actually see the saw blade through the holes. That was that was something that was somewhat satisfying. I'll be be honest. All right, so start cutting the second one and see. Hope that it works out well. All right. Well, the second cut is done, and surprise, surprise, it went better than the first cut. It always seems to go better than the first cut, always. <sighs> the whole learning curve thing. So now i got to figure out, how do I get that out? Again, I don't have a chisel narrow enough to fit in that hole, so that's not going to work. Maybe I'll just drill it out. That might be the easiest way of doing it. Just come in there with a quarter-inch bit, Start just below that hole and just below that, that, that gap. And then just try drilling through and seeing if I can separate it. That may be the best way of achieving this. That takes the least amount of effort and the least amount of frustration. Fortunately means I'm going to have to put both hands on the drill. And this is... I don't know how the heck I'm going to... I should really clamp it from the bottom as well. I've got it clamped here, but I don't know how the heck I would get a clamp... In that spot, I can try, I guess. It's kind of problematic. It's not easy. This is not an easy rig. I don't. Again, I'm not a fine woodworker. I don't have the kind of setups I need to mo hold these things in the way I need to hold them to work on them. Um, but hopefully someday I'll have a better setup where I'm going to be working on that. I do have a new workbench idea in in play. I just haven't had haven't gotten around to it because I've kind of needed the adrenaline, the, 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 the dopamine and serotonin boost of doing shorter projects that actually get me something physical I can hold in my hands that don't take a long time to do. Um, sometimes long-term projects, just they just wear on me. I lose steam. So I prefer ones that are a little bit faster, even though I've been working on this one for about, I don't know, almost three hours now, I guess, close to it. Alrighty. Um, so I guess I'm going to get a drill out and see if I can get that to come out. 
yeah, wow, hmm, not ideal, but find a solution the way I can, I guess. That came out surprisingly easy. I mean, literally, it was, it was like no effort at all to just drill that out. You can see the, 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 the arch right there um, from the drill bit. That came right out. Um, then I used the quarter inch bit to put the slope in. I didn't even have to use the saw on that one. I just used that and I kind of hogged it out, kind of used it as a, as a, um, like a router bit. And then I had to open up this one a little bit because I, because this, since this was nice and round, I don't want to touch this one. I want this to be my, my center, my, my location hole. So this one I didn't touch. So this one I had to open up a little bit down this way so I could get the bolt all the way through. So now this is complete. This is the, this whole handle is done. There's nothing else I need to do to this thing other than probably take it over to the belt sander and knock off the edges. Um, so the next thing I got to do is grind an edge on this with the angle grinder. That's going to be the next step. Put a deep, put an edge. And I mean, again, it's, I'm not going for perfection. It's a, it's a post-apocalyptic battle axe. I'm not shaving with this thing. So I will do that next. Um, come in at, a, at, a, at, a, at an angle with the, with the uh, um, flap wheel, and then just start grinding it off uh, freehand. There's, there's no measure in this thing. I don't really have the setup. I really would love to have, like, you know, a big belt sander that professional knife makers and axe makers and stuff have. But that is not something I have, and it's not really in my budget at the moment. Um, but we'll do what I can with this, make it look as decent as possible and as even as possible. Um, and then after that's done, it's mounting it into the handle and bolting the whole thing together. So it's, we're coming near the end. This is, this is almost complete. Just gonna put the angle on this and then it's assembly. So here is the finished uh, axe edge. And it occurred to me as I was working on this that using a brake disc for this particular job was probably smart because this is probably pretty decent, relatively hard steel and it did take a decent edge. Again, it's not shaving sharp, but I gotta be honest, it's not far off. It's actually a hell of a lot sharper than axes and knives that I've purchased brand new. Um, I know I was very disappointed by the uh, Ma Chetty I picked up a few years ago because it didn't have an edge this good. Um, I have no idea what the actual type of steel this is or the Rockwell hardness on a brake pad, but being used, a brake disc rather, being used as a brake, brake disc is gonna harden the steel even more as it's heated and cooled and heated and cooled. Um, so yeah, this is, uh, it's got a really nice finish and it looks good too. I mean, nice and shiny, I like that. Um, came out pretty good. Um, I may actually find out on if any of the motorcycle shops in the area have any old brake discs they get, don't want anymore. Because if I could lay my hands on some of those, I could do some interesting things. Just imagine taking something like this, cutting it off here, and then having this section be like a hand axe. Now, wouldn't that be cool? That would be cool. So now I need to uh, assemble it and then cut off the bolts because they are going to be too long. Uh, they are going to be too long. Um, and then I'll be done. Now one thing I did do is I, I clamped this to my, I had it over here, and I clamped it uh, to my, tip, but my workbench, and then I did the, the majority of the angle grinding here. Then I set my angle grinder up like this, and I worked on it here, bringing the edge in passes until I gradually got all the flats out of the edge, because it wasn't perfect. When, when I was working on it over there, I can't really see it. You know, I can't see the high spots and the low spots clearly. But over here, just in my hand, I can work on just the flat spots that are in the blade. And then when I was done, I came over here and I cleaned it up, kind of polished it on my uh, my work my uh, uh, my work sharp. Uh, so I ended up with a, a pretty decent edge. I'm, I'm quite happy with this. So now it's to assembly, uh, then cut off the, the two uh, bolts and then we're good we're finished uh and then there'll be the final section and then time for photos so the next time you see this it should be fully assembled so here we have the finished battle axe in all its glory um the uh vintage look on this is quite nice the back side's a little different because um i had to polish you cut them off polish them down 
Um, interestingly, these are the same thread. These bolts, these nuts are interchangeable. This is a half inch diameter on the outside. This is a 9 16 I don't sure if I've ever encountered nuts like that before, wherein the thread was the same, but the outside diameter of the nut was different. That's interesting. I get the feeling this is probably vintage. It's not vintage anymore, um, but it may have been vintage. Um, I'm not sure. A lot of the bolts and nuts that I have here in my shop are vintage because I picked them up at yard sales and at flea markets um, and at state sales and stuff. So you never know when you're going to. I just buy them by the by the box or by jar or um, I'll, whenever I find them cheap because they're always useful. This edge came out really nicely. I am very happy with this edge. Um, I need to look up and see what kind of steel these things are made out of because I gotta get my hands on some more of these, these brake discs because these brake discs could be very useful in the future. They are very nice. But yep, so there we have a battle axe which has edge alignment because it has an oval handle so you can actually tell where your axe edge is without having to look at it firmly attached in a slot custom shaped to the uh, weapon in question. Um, and I don't mind, I discovered after having assembled it, I don't mind that this is sitting in here. I actually set that up at three quarters of an inch in because I figured that was deep enough and I was I was correct. Um, then I clamped it in place, marked it with a center punch, then reversed it, clamped it here, then marked that with a center punch, and I'd put a, a cross here. There's a uh, I don't know if you probably can see, but there's a very light pencil line there and there, so I could locate um, the holes where I wanted them. And it worked out pretty nice, and the fact that the holes ended up being slightly, you know, not perfect, are completely hidden by the, by the washers and the nuts, and by the size of the bolt heads. So, you know, the blemishes have been hidden, you're never going to see them. Um, but yeah, and the centering is pretty decent. It isn't, it isn't bad at all. It's not perfect, but it's not far off, man. It's it's this slightly is skewed. You notice that the top is slightly to the right of center, and the bottom is slightly to the left. It didn't come out perfect, but it's not far off, and that isn't bad for having to try to work with an oval object and try to get that down the middle, um, and doing it freehand. So. I'm quite happy with this. So now I'm going to go take it outside, take some stills for both this video and for my Deviant Art page. So please stop by and check that out. There will be a link in the show notes. Um, but thank you for being here for this uh, weapons build. I hope you enjoyed yourself, and I hope that you will be here for the next.